So hello, today we have a look at the breeding boxes of Mecunorina torquata ugandensis. Uh, it's a blue form. It's said that breeders in Japan have uh, developed this blue variety and that uh, the animals have been in here since uh, three months and of course they are, they have, uh, they are dead now at, after about two months and these animals they die this is the male and the female the pair I have this uh, they were blue ones and now at the moment if you look at them you don't see the blue color anymore it's more kind of a green blue now but uh, at the first moment they came out of the pupil chamber they were completely blue and now let's have a look whether there are some larvae in here um, of course I prefer to take out the, the bigger things and then we dig into the soil yeah, here we see already here's a small one and now I have prepared a big box 65 liters this is an L1 larvae very small one yeah I put it here Here's another one, also an L1, but the bigger one. This one will mold to L2, to the second stage, very soon. And if you have a look here, you see there are a lot of small holes in the substrate. And on the bottom of that hole, there will be a larvae. If I dig here, you see, this is the back of a larvae here. If I go deeper, I can dig it out. Well, here it is. It's an L2 already. Well, and it seems that they have. Oh, this this is from one female, and I made the exp experience that it's better to keep only one female in a box because if you have more than one female in a box, they disturb each other. And sometimes they even kill the larvae. Now here we see a lot of them. So now they will be transferred into a bigger box. The soil here consists of uh, flake soil with rotten leaves. That's about all that they need to grow. I mean they are not giants afterwards but they are nice. Um, they are nice animals like this male here they will be around five to six centimeters and that's enough if you want to be a champion you can add some protein food but from my experience i don't do it anymore i just keep them very naturally and then they grow look at this is full with small larvae here's a very small l1 then here there's some more l2 the breeding box, I will show you afterwards the, how I make it. Here's a small one too, very small L1 larvae. So now I just turn it over. Now, if you look into the breeding box, you see there's uh, clay. On the bottom of the box and most of the animals they live down here on this clay I put some black soil I press it very hard so that it's a, a signal for the animals that now the bottom of the soil is reached and they dig down here and of course if there are a lot of here first I have to sort them out here one two three it said that a female can lay 30 or more eggs this female for sure she had more than 30 eggs until now there are a lot of them here one another one two there's a lot of small larvae here i have to control it afterwards now you have a look in here you see a lot of them and if i'm i'm lucky they will be all very nice blue ones look here's a big one it's an L2 
Ah, there's another one, L1. They just go deep, they dig deep down into the soil, not into the clay on the bottom, but they are very near to it here, you see another one. Probably they feel safe here, and the other thing about the clay is it keeps the humidity of the soil very good. There's another one here. I did want to really duck down to this clay. And I have to look at it. I'll get some water. Oops. Now this, I didn't want to do this, but you see here the clay on the back, uh, on, the, on the bottom of the box. I put it back. And then as soon as I have sorted out all the larvae, of course I put back the substrate into the box and then you can use it for the second, another pair to lay eggs because um, in the first two, three weeks or two months they don't eat so much substrate, you can use the substrate for the next uh, pair to breed.